Hello everyone, Ken here. As many of you know, data science can take a significant amount of time and effort to learn. You have to understand components of computer science, of math, and a bunch of different tools that are changing on a day-to-day -day basis. This can seem like a daunting task, and it can be really difficult to stay motivated. In this video, I share with you five insights that I have used to learn data science and to stay motivated in the work that I do. All of these insights come from various books that I've read. The first insight comes from Atomic Habits by James Clear. The second and third insights come from The Four Disciplines of Execution by Sean Covey. And the last two insights come from two books by Cal Newport, both Deep Work and So Good They Can't Ignore You. All these books are linked in the description below, and if you're interested, definitely check them out. They've had a tremendous impact on my life and the way that I work. As usual, if you enjoy this video, please hit that like button, and if you want to see similar content to this, please subscribe and turn on notifications to my channel. So this first insight is related to creating habits. You want to create good habits, but you also want to start really small. A habit only becomes a habit if you can repeatedly do it. So if I want to learn data science, if I want to make a component of data science a habit in my life, I want to break it down into the most simple form possible. So how I started is I said that I would learn and I would write one line of code each day. Writing a line of code takes maybe 30 seconds. If I couldn't do that every day, even if I was tired, if I felt terrible, if I had a headache, I probably wasn't meant to be a data scientist. That bar is so low. But after you do that for a long period of time, two, three weeks, you can start ramping it up and actually coding a significant amount more. A lot of the time also you'll sit down and you'll write a line of code and you'll just keep going. This makes the barrier to entry of learning and starting extremely, extremely low. And that's one of the keys to actually gaining momentum is just setting one foot in front of the next one. You can start with a couple of these habits. For example, again, writing a line of code a day, reading a data science article each day, or watching a data science YouTube video each day. These things, again, if you're repeating them and you're doing them every single day, they will become legitimate habits and they will start the foundation of your, your data science growth. The second insight that comes from the four disciplines of execution is that we should set clear goals that are measurable, but we should focus on the things that we can control, what uh, Sean Covey calls lead metrics. So let's use an example of, of losing weight. If I am trying to lose 15 pounds, the clear measurable goal is, is that I want to lose 15 pounds, but I shouldn't necessarily focus on a day-to-day -day basis on the weight. I should be focusing on things that I can control that are highly correlated or causal of losing weight. So I should focus on my ability to um, go to the gym, how many times I go each week or if I go every day. And I should also focus on what I eat, what goes into my body. If I do really well on those two things, those lead metrics, then I should lose weight over the time period that I'm focusing on. This works the same with data science. If I want to actually learn how to level up my coding, I should code every day. If I want to learn about new techniques, I should read uh, data science articles every day. And going forward, those are the things that you should really focus on. The process, not the end result, because the end result will come if you have a strong attention to the process goals. Tied to that second insight is this third insight that in order to actually succeed in a lot of these things, you have to hold yourself accountable and you have to get other people to hold you accountable. So the way that you hold yourself accountable is that you keep track of your progress. Let's go back to the initial habits that, that I talked about. If you want to make sure you're doing them, you should be tracking them every day. Again, if we're using that losing weight metaphor, you should be tracking if you're going to the gym, if you are, um, if you're eating the correct things. In terms of data science, you should be tracking, am I actually 
coding every day? Am I working on projects? Am I finishing one every week or every couple weeks? Uh, am I reading and keeping up to date with the new things on a day or week or month basis? And keeping score is important, but it's also really important to uh, advertise that, to show it to yourself, to make it visible to yourself. And so I keep a personal scorecard, which I will show you at the end of the video, uh, that helps me stay in line with these things. It's also important if, if you're learning to have a buddy or, or someone else that can hold you accountable. Uh, you guys can both commit to each other that you are doing things, and it, it's one thing to kind of let yourself down, but it's another thing to, to let one of your friends down or uh, someone that's counting on you down. So it's a it's really valuable system to say, hey, can we be accountability partners on this learning the data science thing? Um, because you will be more likely to complete these tasks, to, to stay on top of this learning process if you have someone depending on you. The fourth insight that I found useful is to schedule your entire day, including your downtime, and also to adjust the schedule if something changes. So when you schedule your day ahead of time, you eliminate the cognitive effort associated with the planning process. So when you're going to study data science, when you're gonna go learn something new, all you have to think about is actually executing on what you've already told yourself to do. This makes it a lot easier to focus during that time period because the ancillary thoughts about what should I do next are non-existent. For a computer science analogy, you're looking at pre-compiled code versus code that has to compile and run. When you pre-compile the code, it just executes. It doesn't have to check any of the variable types or anything like that, and it works a lot faster. When code is not pre-compiled uh, in a language like Python, it just takes a little bit longer to run. In addition, when you schedule downtime, it makes it so that the time doesn't actually creep away from you. Everyone needs a break, but we can set how much time we actually have for these breaks. I know before I started doing this, I would get a lot of work done and then I'd get on Instagram and then I'd get a lot of Instagram done and it would, it would I'd lose control, it would get away from me. I'd spend 30, 40, 50 minutes uh, before I knew it. When I started actually scheduling that downtime, I knew I had it to look forward to and I knew that I was able to actually like put a cap on it because I'd get another chance to, to look at those outlets. The last part of Insight 4 is actually pivoting if your schedule changes. So sometimes I'll, you know, a call will be scheduled really late and my whole schedule will be ruined for the day and then I feel a little bit lost. You know, it's like that there was a bug in my pre-compiled code and it, it, it just didn't run correctly and I have to start from scratch. So when you pivot, it's important to actually take some time up front, reschedule what, what's going to happen over the course of the day, and then you can just go through and execute on it. The last insight that I've found is also uh, from Cal Newport's books, and it is to design your workplace to optimize for quality work. One of the keys to learning is making everything as easy as possible for yourself. And you can do that by environmental design. You know, for example, if I wanted to stop eating junk food, I can either try and use my willpower and you know, have it around my place and just don't eat it, or I can just not purchase junk food or have it around my house. The, the latter um, option, where I don't have any junk food around, is the easiest on my mind, it's the easiest to actually execute on. We're always fighting with ourselves and our willpower and that really drains your energy. So if you want to actually do this for learning data science, a couple of things that I would re recommend is to close all of the other windows on your computer uh, when you're learning and just only focus on the task at hand. I also recommend putting your phone, for example, in another room and when you've scheduled your time, you'll know that, you, that you're actually going to look at it again at a certain, at a, at a certain interval. So, um, you know, those are a couple things. You can also put your uh, workplace, your desk, in a room where uh, it's dedicated for work. So, you know, your, your bed or something like that doesn't look too tempting all the time. In terms of environmental design, you're really going to have to figure out what works for you. The things that I mentioned previously uh, have really worked well for me. And I know they've made it a lot uh, more simple to actually get this work done. The overarching theme here is to make everything across all these steps as easy as possible for you and to add in a little bit of gamification to make sure that you're staying motivated and that you're tracking your progress. Okay, now that we've gotten 
through the entire list. As promised, I will show you the way that I keep track of my progress. Here is the spreadsheet that I use. As you can see on the top, growing my YouTube channel and the new business that I recently started are kind of my top priorities. Uh, so they are my big important, uh, WIG stands for wildly important goal metrics. Also fitness and mental health are really important to me. So as you can see, I'm tracking those as well. Uh, this has worked really well for me to meet a lot of my medium and, and longer term goals. Uh, but you can see that I've slacked off in a couple areas that I need to get back on track on. You guys are welcome to copy this. If there's a lot of demand, I'd be happy to put, um, you know, put this on my GitHub so other people can use it. But uh, again, like this is how I structure my time. Yours might be a little bit different, but I really recommend a system like this. It keeps you accountable uh, and it really keeps you efficient. As you can imagine, these insights can be used to improve the quality of your work outside of just data science. I use this to hopefully improve the quality of my YouTube channel, uh, the Medium articles I write, and any of the other content that I create. Um, I really hope that these are helpful, uh, as helpful to you as they've been to me.